Is that it there? Yeah. Okay. Let's open up a prayer, shall we? Father, we come before your name and thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you do for us. And Lord, even though we have sometimes uh, what we consider calamities, we still thank you for it. We got it done, and Lord, uh, it costs us a lot of money, but I'm sure that you'll provide. We ask you to be with us today as we attempt to worship your name. Help us, Lord, to worship you and to lift your name up. Lord, help us to take a look at the, your word and plant it in our hearts and minds that we cannot sin against you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Take a hymn book and turn to page 384. Mm -hmm. To the first, second, and last verse. Thank you. 
just sit down. Hold on. I want to see if she can play. Can you play I'll Fly Away? Without the words? I mean, without the music? Let's see. What's the key it's in, though? I don't know. pretend you're doing something, okay? Because if I don't see you singing, I might have a choir up here. Alright? Some glad morning when this life is over Uh, and so hopefully you don't have to just listen to me. 
Um, in in scripture today, uh, actually my quiet time. Hold on, boys. Remember, 484. Um, in scripture today, I'm sorry. Psalm 484. No, page 8, 484 in your King James. In your, in your pew Bible. Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, 484. <laughs> Second Chronicles. Yep. But no, 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 not yours. No, just the pew Bibles. Second Chronicles 20 for those who are looking it up in their in their uh, personal Bible. Second Chronicles 20, personal Bibles, 484 in pew Bibles. Um, so one of the things about being at the mission, and I was telling Connie and Lori, is uh, five years ago in February, I've been here five years. I mean, five years in February, I'll be here five years. I started five years ago, and uh, I was testifying to uh, a couple people that when I, uh, about 15 years ago, I told the Lord I was sick of hymns. And uh, he disciplined me and took me out of service, and uh, I didn't get to play. Even when I asked to play, I came up and volunteered with no knowledge of what uh, meter we're in, and he just played. And that's that's a willing servant, and that person can look for a blessing now. Um, so anyway, I, I looked for two hours this week for a song because God said, quit piddling around down at the mission and start doing something. So I called Keith and I said, we're going to start singing. And he said, okay, well, let's take turns. So I went down, I've already asked people to go alongside me and help me, but... Um, I looked and looked and looked through all this music I have, and, and it just, it didn't, it didn't fit, didn't fit. So today, and it was mainly about what people out in the congregation need and what God was leading me. And he said, I want you to sing, the battle belongs to the Lord. And so I went and looked at that scripture, and we're going to, we're going to look at it real quick. I know Keith has to preach today, but I'm going to read this because I want you to not listen to my voice singing. That's not the purpose of this. This is to lead you to a uh, closer walk with the Lord. So 2 Chronicles 20, starting at verse um, 14. Now these men are in trouble. Uh, the, the Israelites are in trouble. They're, they're, they, people hate them. And they're getting ready to be uh, annihilated by a couple of groups. And someone, and we could call this man Keith, uh, was told to go do something, and he went and did it. And we're, we don't all get to be key. Uh, thank the Lord we don't have to be him because he's got a big job, so pray for him as he continues to do it. But in verse 14 it says, in the midst of the assembly, I'm sorry, I'm reading New American Standard, so you know, translate it in your own. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. We're not going to read that list. Go to verse 15. He said, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours but God's. Now, did this apply to anyone or just the Israelites? Just the Israelites. If you're not a Christian, some of these scriptures don't apply to you. All you have to do, though, is take Jesus as your Savior. Keith, a number of people can tell you how to do that. So that's that verse. To, and turn the page, or not turn the page, but 16, it says go. And he tells them exactly what to do. It doesn't matter what, go do it. Verse 17, you need not fight in this battle. What does King James say there on the next part? Position yourselves. Did it say don't go out? No, it said you're not going to fight. Go out, get in position. So some of you are, who are hiding behind your life or your crimes or your... Uh, pathetic existence, you're looking at a person right here that feels that same way. And it says, Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them for the Lord is with you. So what happens um, in the rest of this story is they do what they were told. There are three, three groups of people. Two groups of people defeat each other. Then they go up on this mountain and they all destroy each other. And Jehoshaphat does not lose any people. No. So the good news is, is if we are listening to the Lord and he tells us something and we go do it, we can have confidence he will help us in that. 
this song is the battle belongs to the Lord. Please continue looking at those verses that tell you what to do. And again, I want to really encourage those of you that uh, maybe haven't seen enough miracles in other people's lives to believe that God's real. Ask Him for some. I've said this before. If you need help knowing how to come to Christ so you can be in the club of Christianity that says, My God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory, He and others can show you how to do this. This song is the Bow Belongs to the Lord. A lot of you know the, the little refrain. So anybody that knows the words, the battle belongs to the Lord, which happens four times in this song, sing it when, with me. I don't care. It's I don't care if I'm good or I mean the Lord wants me to do my best, but sing with me. Jesus to heal this man 
so that they could accuse him of working on the Sabbath day. There are some things that people take and they go overboard with. If a farmer has animals, and if those animals need help on the Sabbath day, they go out and help them, don't they? Because if they don't, they lose them. Well, there's common sense in everything we do. Now, are we supposed, truthfully, if you take the word for what the word says, are we supposed to work on the Sabbath day? No. Are we supposed to keep that day holy? Yes, we are. And, and that has dwindled, even in my lifetime, from 40, 50 years ago to today is so much different you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't even know it. But people don't look at it the same way as they did 50 years ago. People back 50 years ago didn't look like it, didn't look at it the way they did 50 years before them. It's a progression of things. But it still says, keep the Lord's day holy. So you rest if you can, do what you have to do, and don't do what you don't have to do. But that's what they were doing. They were trying to accuse him of healing on the Sabbath day. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Now, here, just think about this for a minute. Here's a man that prayed. Maybe, maybe they didn't even pray. He just said, give me your hand. And the man's hand was made whole. And here's people out there watching that. They saw it take place. And then they go out and they're going to say, We're, we got to figure out how to destroy this person. Today, in the day that we live in, Christianity is under attack. I heard the other day, I, I, I don't know if it was 90,000 or 9,000, it was a lot. People, Christians, every year, I think it was the bigger number, is killed every year. Every year. Now, Christians have a tendency not to fight back. They have a tendency not to fight back. And so, with Islam, Hinduism, and all this kind of, you'd be surprised how much goes on in India against Christians. Pakistan, India, uh, the Far East. Christians are being killed every day, and basically no one is saying anything about it. And if you remember when this election took place, you didn't hear the Democrats talking about the evangelicals. You didn't hear the Democrats talking about Christians. You didn't say a word. But the evangelicals voted for Trump, and Trump made it. Now, regardless of whether you like him or you don't like him, that's immaterial. He's our president, and we honor him as president until he's worth, unless he shows us he's not worth honoring. So far, what he's done, he's created already several thousand jobs. Several thousand. I forget, it's way up there, actually. But because of the things that he's going to do. And we had the highest corporate tax rate in the world. He's dropping that from 35% to, I think, 15 And that will bring people back from all over the country, all over the world. People will come back to America. People that moved their factories overseas will come back. And they already are. They already are. So this coming Friday, I think it's Friday, is it the 20th? I believe it is. When they have the inauguration, there could be a national disaster that day. There's going to be over 700,000 protesters. That's a lot of people. Let's take a look at something that nobody will talk about. I will, but nobody else will. During the Obama administration, i got to be honest, it surprised me nobody tried to take him out. But again, you're looking on the one side. The right does not look at things the same way the left does. Now, with this new administration coming up, we've got about 17 or 18 Democratic senators that are not going to show up. we got people that are saying, he don't belong in there, blah, blah, blah. And he was voted in by the people. Not the people at the Electoral College throughout the country voted him in. That's the way we do things. And we honor the president for who he is until he proves that he's not worth honoring. 
But there's going to be a tremendous amount of people. There are people that are going to protest. People, I, I heard the, the head of the Bikers Association, and there's going to be something like 250,000 bikers. And they said, if there's any trouble, we're going to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, or we're going to help take care of it. That, my friends, we could have a day of disaster. I pray that it don't happen. I pray that America <coughs> does what it needs to do. And we do things right. We do things right. Things that are done right is good for you. The men and women that we have coming in here, especially the men, if you do it right, you don't have to pay fines, you don't have to go to jail, you don't have to look over your shoulder, you don't have to have probation officer, parole officers behind you. Once you get free, if you make up your mind never to get in trouble again, you'll never do it. But you've got to make up your mind never to do it again. Never. And that's important. Not just while you're here. While you're here, not too many people get in trouble, do they? They stay out of trouble. Why? Because there's still a little bit of a hand above you. But when you get free from parole and probation, there's no hand above you anymore. And then you got to do it right. And it's important that you do. It's important that you do because your life depends on it. People around you that know you, that are related to you, it affects them. And you want to have a good reputation. You can come out of it, you can come out of a bad reputation and change it and change it for good if you want to, but you've got to want to. And make, my theory would be, make the parole officers and probation officers look silly because they think you're going to go back and just show them you're wrong. Show them you're wrong. That, that would be my way to look at it. I'd say, you're never going to pull that on me. I'll never get in trouble again. Now that's what you need to say. It's important that way. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him that they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea. And what happened? A great multitude of people followed him. And from Judea. So not only people from Galilee, but people from Judea came together. Is it still ringing? Yeah. Uh, came together. And still... Now, and follow Jesus, still got a little ring and I ain't got time to take it out this morning. Um, still follow Jesus wherever he went. And why did he do it? Because he healed one person in particular, the guy with the withered hand. And you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. If a person is truly filled with the Spirit of God, and he prays for somebody, and that person is healed completely, and... They know that person, and they know what was wrong with that person. You couldn't keep the people away from this door. They, the police would have to come down and move them out. You couldn't keep them away. Same way with the church. But you don't hear that, do you? You don't hear much about that. And Jerusalem, and I, and I, well, I went there, I, that, I do you, it, me, or whatever it is. And beyond the Jordan. And those from Tyre and Sidon and a great multitude. And when they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. So he told his disciples that a small boat should be kept ready for him because of the multitude. At least they should crush him. Now that's how many people was around Jesus. He was worried that they might stampede. So he had a boat set out there for him. And it said he healed many so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him just to touch him. Just to touch him. There was a woman in the Bible at issue of blood. And she said, if I can but what? Touch the, hem of his garment. Touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Now that's faith. That's faith. She didn't ask Jesus to heal her right there. She said, if I can touch his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And that's faith, to have that kind of faith to believe that God can heal you and that he can touch you. Does it happen? Yes. Does it happen a lot? No. Would it be nice if it did? Yes. It would be nice if it happened more often. But it don't. 
And the unclean spirits, wherever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out demons. Now here's something that we have to understand. He called these men, he gave them a little power to be able to go out and to touch lives and heal them. And he gave them that power. They were called of God, they were appointed of God, they might have even been predestined to meet Christ. But they still had one thing that they needed to do. What was it? Nobody knows what it was? You guys, buddy. Yeah, who said that? Yeah, they had to be saved. They had to be covered by the blood. They said because it said no man will make it to heaven unless he is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this was a ways before that. So Jesus gave them a little power <clears throat> to go out and to witness, to pray for one another, pray for people and see them healed. And that's, that's pretty good. And it said in 15, and to get power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. And Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bo, 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 Bo we never use that, uh, which is called the, the sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, <coughs> Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And they went into a house. Then the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. They were so packed in the place that they couldn't even feed themselves. Can you imagine being packed into a... You know, I live a quarter of a mile from Country Jam. There ain't no way, no way nobody could even pay me enough money to go there. Never. I wouldn't go if they gave me the money to go. But those people stand out there in that hot sun all day long. And yeah, dirt, and, and, and I mean, I wouldn't do that if they paid me. But here, Jesus was so crowded that they couldn't even eat. There were so many people there. And boy, that, you know, <coughs> we can't imagine that. But when he, when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay, hold, to, to lay hold on him. For they said, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub. And by the ruler of demons, he cast out demons. Now that showed how smart they were. Demons don't cast out demons. Satan don't cast out his demons. He just keeps filling people with more of them and more of them and more of them. <coughs> so he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Now we can look at that in a lot of different ways. Churches that are divided split. They never split on good grounds. They never split with harmony. They always split with anger and frustration, pain and hurt. Now, I don't care how successful that church is. That church is not in the sight of God, successful, because it's split under adverse conditions. Now, the right way to do it would be if a church said, okay, we want to start a church five miles away. We'd like to have 20 people from our church volunteer to go there for a year and help them get started. 20 people raise their hand. Next Sunday, they're gone. But they're over to the other church helping them get started. That's the right way to do it. The wrong way is, when you get mad and angry and you can't get things right, you, you split because of anger and pain, frustration, hurt. It's not right. God can't honor that. He can't honor it. And if a house is divided against itself, it can't stand. That's why so many divorces are today. <coughs> because the house is divided. Nobody knows how to talk. Nobody knows how to sit down and reason today. That's the problem with people today. They don't know how to reason together. 
The Bible said, didn't say, come, let us argue. <laughs> it didn't say, come, let us fight. It said, come, let us reason together. That means you, you give your opinion, I give mine, we sit there, hash it out. If you can learn from me, if I can learn from you, that's good. But we don't get angry one with another. There are some people, and I've had a few of them in here, that came in over the years, I haven't had it for a long time, but for over the years, and from other churches that uh, believe in a different way, and I've sat back there at that table we have back there, and I've argued, well, I won't say argue, I don't argue with them, but I've presented the way I believe, they present the way they believe, and one man, after about three hours, he said, you almost convinced me. Almost convinced. You see, there's doubt. And when there's doubt, you don't have assuredness. If you are positive in your faith, you're positive in what, the way you live, you don't have to make any excuses for it. You just live the way God wants you to. And that's important. How many men here in the last month has got a job? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Good. That's great. That's great. Are you better off now than you were before? Of course you are. Of course you are. You know? And then your life is starting to go in a different direction. Keep it going that way. And in verse 26, And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Now I've heard people use God's name in vain. I've heard people use Jesus' name in vain. I've heard all the rut gut language that there is to hear. And I imagine there's a lot of people here that's used all the rut gut language, and maybe some of you still do. You don't have to. You don't have to have any of that stuff in your vocabulary at all. If your answer is yes or no, and you live by that, you don't have to add anything to it. <clears throat> the only thing people add to is to embellish what they're saying. And all it does is make you look bad. You don't have to do it. And here I don't love I don't even like it over there. Although I can't be over there 24 hours a day. But it, there's no sense in it. There's no reason for it. And if I hear it in here, the first time I might let it by. The second time you're going to be outside for a while. Because it just is not the thing to do. And I don't care if you get angry or if you get whatever happens. You don't need to use that kind of language. We just if we keep our if we keep our minds clear, our hearts clear, we don't have to have anything in there. Verse 30. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brother? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him, and said, Here are my mother and my brother. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whoever does the will of God. For those of you who have spent time in prison, you know what that side is. I don't have to add anything to it, take anything away. You know what that side is. You know what puts you there? You're out. Maybe not completely free, but freer than you were then. Maybe. And uh, you have to learn how to do it right. Learn how to live right. And make up your mind that you're never going to go back. No matter what happens, you are never going to go back. Because in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, I think it is, it says sin is lawless, it's lawless is a sin. You break the law, you're going to pay God's price, you're going to pay man's price. You don't break the law, there's no penalty. If you're free from the law, there's no penalty. You know, I heard Benny say that you got a ticket for something, I don't know what it was, driving a cab. That's easy to do sometimes. I know I got one years ago too. And uh, when I was driving a yellow cab in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it's pretty easy to do when you're on the road all the time. But if you don't do anything against the law, you don't break the law. So if you don't break the law, you're free from the law. And what does that do? That keeps money in your pocket. 
keeps you from going to jail, keeps you from having parole officers behind your back all the time until you get off parole or probation. That's how you're free. That's how you get free indeed. And that's the thing that's important in our life, to understand that God has a way for us to live that is right with Him. I don't know why the world fights it so much, except for the fact that men and women do not like to admit that they're sinners. They don't like to admit that they're, they've sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so they fight back. And we have people in America that would like to destroy Christianity. One of, uh, matter of fact, I think it was Bill Ayers. I believe it was him. He said we need to get rid of 25 million Christians in America. 25 million. And who was Bill Ayers? Anybody here know who Bill Ayers was? Warner, I know that. He's the one, he was the one, one of the ones that bombed <coughs> all those places in Chicago. He was the one that, that uh, was Obama's, one of Obama's mentors. And he said, I wish I could have done more. They killed two or three police. And, and uh, not repentant, not, not sorry for anything. And he's a professor in some college. I don't know where it's at in Illinois or somewhere. And then they wonder why our kids, when they go to college, they come back and they're all messed up. The colleges now are run by leftists, almost every one of them. And the left is different than the right. <coughs> and that, to sit down and explain it, I'm not going to take time to do that today. But here's the thing you want to watch. For eight years, nobody on the right tried anything on the left against Obama. But this week coming up could be a scary week. Could be a very scary one. Because we have a country that's divided. We have a country that's divided. We need to come back together. We need to be unified. We need to get our act together and do the things that God wants us to do. Now, I want to say this, and I want to say it to all you guys, especially the guys that have been in prison or jail. I'm proud of you for staying out of trouble. You know, we talk to people all the time, and we say, you never see our name in the paper. And you never do. You never see our name in the paper. And the police look at things a lot different than we do. You know that. And, and uh, they say, well, everybody will go back. No, they won't. No. Don't have to, as long as you learn how to live right. And you'll learn how to respect yourself and learn how to respect others. That's the most important thing. Learn how to live the way God wants you to. It's not no great plan, although it is a great plan of salvation, but it's not no great plan that you got to do this, 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 and this, this. But what you got to do is what's right for yourself. And then what's right for yourself spreads out to others. And that's important. That's important. And I want to thank you and appreciate that you stay out of trouble while you're here. Most people do anyway. And I appreciate that. <laughs> now, just remember... The kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We have a nation divided against itself, and if we don't, if we're not careful, we're going to fall. In your life, if you're trying to do right, you try, and you're doing wrong, and you can't make up your mind which way you're going, get your get your soul settled with God, ask Him to forgive you of your sins, live a life pleasing unto Him. And you know what? You'll never get in trouble again if you do that. But you've got to make up your mind that that's what you want more than anything. More than anything. Father in heaven, as we bow before you, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you give us and all the things, Lord, that we take for granted. Lord, we pray for, the, for Israel today. Lord, we pray that you'll be with your people. And just strengthen them, Lord, and uh, bring them to you. Lord, for the Christians that are being persecuted around the world, we pray, Lord, that you give them strength and courage to stand the test. Because if we're not careful, eventually it's going to come right back here. And then it'll be up to us to stand the test. Lord, we pray for our country. Pray, Lord, that next week there'll be peace and people, Lord, will lay down their animosity and hurt and whatever else they have, anger. 
and accept, Lord, uh, the presidency as such. Now, Lord, we ask you to be with each person here in this building. Touch each one in a special way. We ask you to lift them up, strengthen them. For those that don't know you, Lord, help them to come to a relationship with you, that they know that their sins will be forgiven. And that, Lord, is the beginning of success. Getting your heart right with God is the beginning of success. And so, Lord, we're just asking you to work in the lives of men and women. Ask you to keep them safe. Ask you, Lord, to just do in their life what they need. And, Lord, for us at the mission, we pray, Lord, that uh, someone will reach out and give us a hand with the cost of this sewer bill because it's a pretty heavy one for us to take right now. And we leave that in your hands. We thank you for what's going to be done ahead of time. Now be with us today, Lord. Guide us in all that we do. We ask this in your name. Amen.